Thank you for joining us. Flags are flying at half-mast, and many events are canceled across Russia as the country observes a national day of mourning. Many continue to lay flowers outside the Moscow Concert Hall, where at least 133 people were killed in Friday's attack. A branch of the Islamic State group has claimed responsibility and even released video of the assault. Still, Vladimir Putin has suggested that Ukraine was involved, claims Kyiv has flatly denied. Liza Kamenov brings us the latest on the investigation. It's the worst terror attack on Russian soil in nearly 20 years, which claimed the lives of over 130 people. In a televised speech on Saturday, President Putin suggested Ukraine could be involved, but Vladimir Zelensky was quick to deny responsibility. What happened yesterday in Moscow, it's obvious that both Putin and others are trying to shift responsibility on someone else. They always have the same methods. It has already happened. There have already been shootings, explosions and houses blown up, and they always blame others. Eleven people in total have been detained over the attacks in Moscow's Krokus City Hall. The four gunmen who carried out the attack were arrested within hours. They were caught in Russia's Bryansk region, just 140 kilometers from Ukraine. The Interior Ministry says they were all foreign nationals, with Russian media identifying them as citizens of Tajikistan. Vladimir Putin warned all those responsible for the terror attack would be punished. All perpetrators, organizers and contractors of this crime will suffer fair and inevitable punishment, whoever they are, whoever guides them. But in his address to the nation, he did not mention the Islamic State group, who claimed responsibility twice on their social media channels. Their statements are backed by a U.S. intelligence official who says the Islamic State's Afghanistan affiliate, known as ISIS Khorasan, is responsible. Well, for some analysis, we can speak to Mark Temeninsky, a Ukrainian-American journalist and non-resident fellow with the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. First, what impact do you think this attack has had on the Russian public and their sense of security? Thank you for having me, Allison. It shows that even in police states that horrible events such as this can occur. And what is unfortunate is the United States had warned the Russian government several weeks prior to this event saying that something was going to happen and it was largely ignored. And my condolences to the families that are impacted by this horrible event. And what do you make of the Kremlin's response to this attack so far? It was strange in that President Putin spent several hours away from television and, and making an address and people were a little confused and and it's odd that the Russian government did not have a direct response to, to the events happening. Finally, when they came to a conclusion, they're trying to blame Ukrainian authorities for what occurred, as we've seen from the United States intelligence and some other European groups and Ukraine. Ukraine had nothing to do with this attack. ISIS is claimed responsibility for the attack. But Putin, I think, is trying to make some sort of connection that doesn't exist to try to justify perhaps a new attack on Ukraine as a result of these terrorist attacks. And do you think that that narrative is going to be successful and believed by the Russian public? I think that with Russian propaganda operating within Russia in the media and on social media platforms, they're able to be successful in driving these terms of statements. And it's another attempt to try to justify the unjust war that has been happening over the last two years in Ukraine. Something similar to what the Russian government has done in previous attacks, such as the Chechen wars or events that happened in Georgia in 2008. And we're seeing Ukraine and Western allies, you know, already accusing Russia of using this attack to defend its war on Ukraine. Uh, what do you think that they could be doing to counter that narrative? I think with Western countries just trying to crack down on troll farms that operate on social media platforms, spreading misinformation and disinformation, trying to get ahead of the news and sharing the events that are occurring to try to drown out the factually inaccurate statements or false information being spread everywhere. But this is nothing new. This is something that Russia operates well on for several decades now. 
So it's a, it's a constant battle that Western countries will have to, to face in the future and present. And Russian media have been reporting that the gunmen were from Tajikistan. If that's confirmed, can you explain what significance that might have? That, I think, matters in that they're trying to say that the blame is on other areas. As we've said, this is an attack that was conducted by the ISIS affiliate within Afghanistan. So if anyone should be punished, it should be, should be that organization rather than trying to make claims on individuals or countries that were perhaps not involved in the terrorist attack. And it's another justification, I think, for trying to spread Russia's control within the region and taking over. And some of the videos that have been released were very disturbing about capturing these individuals and what, what Russian authorities had these people do and, and, and torturing. And what impact do you expect this attack to have on the war in Ukraine, both in the immediate and, and more long term? There are rumors now circulating that there may be another conscription within Russia where hundreds of thousands of individuals would be drafted by the Russian government to go fight in Ukraine. And as a possibility, if Russian government is trying to blame Ukraine for this recent terrorist attack, they can say that Ukraine just attacked us, we need more men fighting in our, our war, and as a result, we will draft several individuals and send them over. And there's also reporting that the Russian Federation is preparing a new offensive as early as this sum upcoming summer, where they would launch attacks in eastern and southern Ukraine to try to reclaim territory that the Ukrainians took back defending their country. So it's very, very concerning how this may play out in the coming weeks and months. All right, Mark Temeninsky, thank you again so much for taking the time to speak with us. That's Mark Temeninsky, a Ukrainian-American journalist and non-resident fellow with the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Thank you for having me.